There can be no doubt, at least as far as Middle East policy is concerned, that IPAC is the voice of America. IPAC stands for the American-Israel Public Affairs Committee, and in case there is any doubt about its aims, its subtitle is America's Pro-Israel Lobby. There can also be no doubt that its policies put considerations for the state of Israel first, over and above any considerations for the safety and security of the United States and its citizens. The motives and aims behind the establishment and growth of IPAC are boldly stated on its website. For more than half a century, the American-Israel Public Affairs Committee has worked to help make Israel more secure by ensuring that American support remains strong. From a small pro-Israeli public affairs boutique in the 1950s, IPAC has grown into a 100,000-member national grassroots movement described by the New York Times as the most important organization affecting America's relationship with Israel. Did you detect anywhere in that paragraph a mention of any benefit for Americans? I didn't, so let's see if there is any such mention in the next paragraph. As America's leading pro-Israel lobby, IPAC works with both Democratic and Republican political leaders to enact public policy that strengthens the vital U.S.-Israel relationship. With the support of its members nationwide, IPAC has worked with Congress and the executive branch on numerous critical initiatives, from securing vital foreign aid for Israel to passing legislation aimed at stopping Iran's illicit nuclear program. You should note that the word vital was used twice in that paragraph. But the question that Americans should be asking themselves is, vital for whom? Is it vital that your troops, your sons and daughters, are now being killed in Afghanistan and Iraq? And if IPAC has its way, there is a strong possibility of the United States being sucked into a war with Iran on Israel's behalf. And we should not forget the embedded lie, Iran's illicit nuclear program. Nothing has been proved to be illicit about Iran's nuclear program, but the people who write for IPAC do not bother with qualifying words like suspected or alleged. They come right out with Iran's illicit nuclear program. And one cannot help but wonder how many more lives may be lost because of that line. But never would they dare to mention Israel's clear and present nuclear capability of at least 200 nuclear weapons and their means of delivery. Nor do they mention the not unreasonable proposition that Iran has a right to defend itself and to support other like-minded groups in its own region. After all, the United States has hundreds of thousands of military personnel as well as clandestine operatives in a region which is not exactly on its own doorstep. And please, spare me the claims that Iran's president threatened to wipe Israel off the map as repeated by then-Senator Obama to keep IPAC happy. Its president denies the Holocaust and threatens to wipe Israel off the map. The wipe Israel off the map lie had been thoroughly debunked at least two years before Obama repeated it. In fact, the word Israel was not mentioned in that section of the speech. Quoting the late Supreme Leader of Iran, Ayatollah Khomeini, President Ahmadinejad said, This regime occupying Jerusalem must vanish from the page of time. Farsi was the language of Omar Khayyam, the great Persian mathematician, philosopher, astronomer, physician, and poet, and I cannot resist reading one of his verses. The moving finger writes, and having writ, moves on. Nor all your piety nor wit shall lure it back to cancel half a line, nor all your tears wash out a word of it. The poem has meanings on all kinds of levels, about our words and deeds being permanent, a kind of cosmic record which can never be erased, and world leaders who regularly use lies and half-truths to advance their agendas should take note of it. So should those who vote for them. It has been pointed out by Persian scholars that the equivalent of wiping anything off a map simply does not exist in this most poetic of languages. But it is not at all fanciful to suggest that the equivalent of this expression exists in most languages. The idea is so common and well understood, it is idiomatic. 
less used but just as understandable is the expression banish from the page of time. No honest translator could claim that the idiom nothing lasts forever could possibly mean I am going to kill you or that the idiom banish from the page of time could possibly mean wipe Israel off the map. But it suits Israel to perpetuate the myth and what suits Israel suits IPAC. And where IPAC leads, Congress and yes, the President of the United States must follow. If they all know what's good for them. And President Obama certainly did at his very first press conference in the White House. Mr. President, do you know of any country in the Middle East that has nuclear weapons? Uh, with respect to nuclear weapons, uh, you know, I don't want to speculate. What I know is this. Of course, he did not answer the question to which everyone else knows the answer. But since then, he has done nothing but speculate about Iran's nuclear program. Iran is breaking rules that all nations must follow. All nations, that is, except Israel. We have made it clear that we will do our part to engage the Iranian government on the basis of mutual interest and mutual respect, but our patience is not unlimited. This is not about singling out Iran. This is not about uh, creating double standards. Technically, you are correct, Mr. President, because the double standards were created long ago. What you are doing is attempting to ensure that they are maintained, and that is one of IPAC's main aims. In this graphic, the orange represents the population of the United States, approximately 310 million citizens, while the P represents the membership of IPAC, a mere 100,000 people. This is a pressure group whose clearly stated aims and ambitions put the interests of Israel above and beyond any other consideration, which really means that IPAC is, to all intents and purposes, the voice of America. And only when the voices of the majority of United States citizens are heard will this gross imbalance be redressed. Send emails or get on the phone to your representatives and tell them how you feel about your taxes propping up the illegal apartheid state of Israel. For the sake of yourselves, your families, and yes, the rest of us, please take America back.